he's just a tiny hamster. He's just a little rodent. And the world is filled with creatures and people and animals and insects die all the time. The howdy howdy howdy, nearly senior citizen here, greetings boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this a brand new day. Hokey Smokes, little ghost, is still hanging in there. I thought for sure he was going to be gone when I got back from Lockheed's last night, from the way he, he was breathing and barely moving. And so this morning I came in expecting to find him all cold and hard, but I couldn't find him, dug him around, and then he poked his head out of his burrow and was looking around. He moves, he's walking around, he's more crawling, he's kind of clumsy, and he's breathing hard. He's having to really breathe hard just to get air. But he's eating and drinking and being as active as he can. He's still uh, wheezing and he has to go puh, 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 to try and be able to breathe. And it's just, uh, I, I don't want him to suffer. But I don't want to, you know, euthanize him if he's going to get better. So... But he's, he's a hanging in there. And of course, late, slow, um, uh, uh <laughs> front loading of videos. Hey, if you could toss me a like, that'd be very cool. If you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be awesome. If you could leave me a comment, any comment at all, <clears throat> even for the algorithm, that would be awesome. Double plus good. And I would like to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. They're literally beautiful and literally awesome people that are, in fact, literally beautiful and literally awesome. They help to keep me, my kitty cat, and my hamster, as long as he's going to be alive, alive. And that is very appreciated, each and every one of these people. If you would like to become one of these beautiful and awesome people, there are links in the video description. If you'd like to help me out without becoming a patron, there are links to a PayPal for donations. If you'd like to help me out without sending money, there's an Amazon wishlist link. And of course, there's a post office box where you can send me postcards or keychains or anything at all that you would like. And I'll open them up in video. Yay! Front loading of videos over. Thumbs up. Oh, my nose is, is like damp. <laughs> Gotta love that. So, yeah, it's a brand new day. I didn't get much done. I have been worried sick about ghosts. I mean, I was crying yesterday, just bawling, because I felt so horrible. Ah, oh, so joy. I mean, he's just a tiny hamster. He's just a little rodent, and the world is filled with creatures, and people, and animals, and insects die all the time. There's a beginning and a middle and an end to everything that exists, and we're not in charge of when that happens. So I really shouldn't worry, but I do, especially since with all of our pets, we give them a little piece of our heart. And when they go, we don't get that back. It hurts. And I, I am a hamster person. There is something about hamsters that just speaks to me inside. Just like I'm a cat person. There is something about cats that just speaks to me inside. I like dogs. I like all animals. But I don't like dogs enough that I want one. I mean, they're nice. And I understand why people like them. I mean, I like cats. I understand dog people like dogs. And dogs speak to them the same way. So, thumbs up for that. But uh, they don't for me. For some reason, rodents and stuff like that really speak to my heart. Don't know why. Thumbs up. But I have been worried sick, so I haven't done a whole lot. Still haven't gotten any of the solo RPG stuff done that I've wanted to do. I had a lot of falling asleep problems yesterday for a time. And then after that, just feeling awful. Dithering because I felt bad because of him wanting to help, not being able to do anything, and because of that being just locked. And, uh, but I went walkies, and that was good. I was able to think as much as I can. And then I came home and tried to play video games and listen to music and do what I could. And so at least 
life goes on. I've been thinking about all sorts of things. I got some stuff written down and some stuff not written down. <laughs> one of the things that I watched a video where this one person was talking about Gen Z humor and how a lot of it is just you can't figure it out or is cosmic existential stuff and how some of it is funny because you know it's evidence of somebody's psyche breaking down and that's funny and <clears throat> the thing is while I was listening to that I went well yeah that is funny but I like a lot of the Gen Z meme humor that's anti-humor because I've dealt with that sort of thing my whole life in pre-internet internet culture when I was involved in APAS, Amateur Press Associations, where people would do zines where you printed up your zine, sent it off to somebody, they put it into a book, mailed it off to all the members, and you would produce material and you would comment on everybody else's material. People did short stories, weird cartoons, just talking about their lives, all the stuff that people vlog about and do internet-wise but this was pre-internet and there were memes that would go around inside of books and the like. Anti-humor is something, again, I have been really interested in and I find a lot of anti-humor funny because of that and as much as you're not supposed to analyze humor, I have found the three types of anti-humor that I find the best. There is the type that's just funny because it's not funny. It's a joke that's not funny, or it's a joke that's not really a joke. There's no punchline, just something where it's, it's not actually funny, but because it's not funny, it's funny. I will laugh at stupid stuff that's not funny because it's not funny, which makes it funny. So there's the stuff that's just not funny because it's not funny, which makes it funny. And then there's the absurdest not funny stuff. One video I saw that encapsulated this one for me perfectly was the person that says they're going to do this epic corn dog prank and they open up a cupboard and they put a corn dog in the in the cupboard and then they shut it. And like the dad comes into the room and says they're gonna get a corn you know, they're gonna get something out of the cupboard and they open up the cupboard and they see the corn dog and so they morph into a horse. And that's the joke. It's absurdist, surreal, makes no sense. It isn't funny, which is why it's funny. And if you can come up with the absurdist, surreal stuff that's just right, yeah, it's not funny, which is why it's so funny. And then there's the type of anti-humor where something's funny because it's literally horrible. This is the kind of humor where you've got the, the movies where there's a large body count, but it's a comedy where somebody dying is funny. If somebody gets an ax in the side of their head and they're dead because of that, that's not funny which can make it absolutely freaking hysterical to absolutely murder someone with an ax to the side of the head as a punchline for a joke. Yeah, you murdered them. They're just a corpse now, and that's the joke. And it's funny because it's horrific and not funny, which makes it hysterical. So these are the three types of anti-humor so far that I have identified that I really enjoy the most. I mean, there's even a song, I can't remember the person who did it. It's a nice, happy, friendly song. But in the music video, uh, everybody's being murdered by a serial killer. And, you know, corpses are literally being piled up and blood and death. And yeah, it's funny. It's a great video. It's, it's funny with all that murder. So thumbs up for that. But then you really have to like that kind of humor. But then, you know, human beings are wired weird, so thumbs up on that. On the creative front, I just wanted to talk again about why I'm doing the whole talking about the setting and the stuff. I have a project that I'm working on, which is A Day in the Life, A Year on the Razor's Edge, which is I'm taking it from just before the kaiju does the latest rampage where it kills and or, and or eats up to 15,000 people out of an area where there's only 25,000. 
And then it runs through that for a full year to show how the people there live their lives in such a crazy place, but that they do live. It's just life. I mean, life on the razor's edge is nuts. It is an untamable, unending frontier. And your chances of dying, of being eaten alive, are only small. Not exceedingly small, not vanishingly small, just small. It is a dangerous, wild place, but the inhabitants are, well, you know, they are the descendants of thrill seekers and adrenaline junkies. And there are people that when they they get the site and they realize that there's a whole new place that they can go visit and they visit the razor's edge and then they move there because that sort of excitement is what they need in their lives. There's the town of Tall Ned, small town, Tall Ned. The deputy who helped out this one sheriff kind of got a bad fixation, went south in their head and tried to kill uh, Tall Ned, who for the last three, 400 years has lived out in the forest around the town of Tall Ned. The deputy took himself and a couple others out to go get Tall Ned. And well, they found the bodies of the people that the deputy took with them, but they never actually found anything but just bloody cloth and such of, of the actual deputy. So the sheriff needed somebody, put up a whole bunch of ads even on the outside. The, the deputy who lived and was born out here was so close to having their sight activate. And when you're close like that, you can get flashes. Saw the wanted ad and the exposure to that clicked him up and into the your sight has cleared you have the sight and doors just loomed everywhere and the door to the razor's edge in Brooklyn and South Carolina is imposing when you first see it it can be terrifying it is a gigantic door but when he went through and got to tall Ned uh, yeah he liked it at first he would commute stay there during the week and then come back to the outside on the weekend but then he just packed up and moved he likes it there and a lot of people when they get the site that clears up and they travel to the inside they like it and so that's good definitely a thumbs up on that i do have the other companion project that is the cryptid version of that where the in the story i'm telling on the razor's edge which is a whole bunch of slices of life it, there's no following a main character there's no here's the plot of the story no it is just a one huge slice of life for one year following individual slices of lives of people and communities and places the cryptid version of that if this is the year here the cryptid version takes place like this but i still want to do a full year following the character of jerry brighthammer and jerry is the person that starts off as a normal individual and then their cryptid vision powers up just because of genetics it clicks in and Jerry is one of those people that they have the maximum human cryptid vision. Their, their vision has cleared up maximally. He's getting so much info that's coming into all of his senses. He feels just stoned all the time. He does not feel scared or frightened of anything. He is too stoned to be scared. And on top of that, he doesn't even have to worry so much. He has so many extra universal sensory organs. Subconsciously, he knows where everybody is, what everybody's doing, everything that's happening in a several block radius around him, while consciously he's just going, oh man, that just looks so good. Yeah, but, and it's like, oh, hi, yeah, hi, James. As a guy enters the room, like, 50 yards back so he, he's he's a good character that doesn't portray him very well because I'm not thinking very clearly today but still that's the idea and it's his exposure to an acceptance into an understanding that this is the life that he loves as he becomes more entwined 
with the whole cryptid world. At the end of that year, I mean, he couldn't integrate back into normal society if he wanted to. If you have a maxed out cryptid site like he has, because he has so many extra universal organs, 51% of his presence is made up of extra universal materials. 49% of him is this much of him. Because there's so much that's not really of this universe that's a part of who he is, normal people just, you, you, your eye glides off of him. You're looking at him and you sort of start looking in other places because you forget he's there. So he can't integrate back into normal society. But he doesn't want to. The life of the cryptid world is in the urban towns of anywhere, urban cryptids, their lives are changing rapidly and violently in many, many, many cases. Whereas the more rural and feral cryptids, their lives have not really changed a whole lot. Feral cryptids only in that their world is getting smaller because we keep, there's so little of the world that we haven't already just tamed. Rural cryptids are the ones that live in the smaller areas and urban cryptids are the ones that are, they're gathering in urban centers like the fictional town of Brookerton, South Carolina with 1.5 to 2 million people. It varies. It's sometimes there's a whole lot more, sometimes there's less. It's like any town or city. But there's several thousand cryptids that live around and in that town now and lots of cryptids are starting to do that. And as they are <clears throat> just warped and deformed reflections, that's the word, of us, of our dreams, our hopes, our nightmares, our fears, and our best and our worst, they are not changing as a result of the outside world. They are not changing as, as a result of what they would like to do. They are being forced into different activities and changes genetically based on how what we fear. It's horrible. I am really just, just mad at myself for the terrible things I've done to these people. But yeah, the, because of this and the way their lives are changing and the way that they're shackled to us, the lives of urban cryptids right now are in flux. And life as an urban cryptid is often brutal and painful and short. But they don't have a choice. And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments on my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank however many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. It's never many, but that's okay. As long as it's more than zero, thumbs up and thank you much. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count in American Sign Language, well, you've already seen how my brain is working or not working today. Joy. So we have Jesse Koskinen. Thumbs up. Thank you. And it's always good to see you in the comments, my friend. And we had Adrian, F-N-T-E-S. Oh my gosh. In the past, what, 30 years of them since Doom has come out, it, they've only sped up with the number of mods and total conversions and maps that are have been made for Doom. It's sped up. <laughs> we have J-A-Y-Y. Uh, thank you very much. And here's hoping that things go well for you as well. Jesse Kaleno, thumbs up. And thank you very, very much. We have Faux Flare, thumbs up. Thank you. Vortex, greatly appreciated it. And I'm hoping to get some more Walkies videos done here real soon. We have Fat Shroom, 666, thumbs up and thank you. Chris, well, whichever name you choose, just let me know and I will make sure to call you by that thumbs up. Ben B, greatly appreciated. And oh yes, I did, I mentioned in comments, I do want to talk about horror movies and such, but I haven't seen any movies at all in so many years. Both not having money, not having a vehicle, and my ADHD, I haven't seen any movies at all since my wife died. So I can't really talk about any movies. I haven't seen any. And then Ben B, or did I, was this Ben B? Or, well, we'll, we'll give Ben B a 10 on that one. And then there's 10 people who left me comments in the past 24 hours. Thumbs up and thank you. Get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people. Thumbs up and thank you. Hopefully, 
I'm going to be able to do things instead of just being ruined by what's happening with Little Ghost. I was trying to see if he's gone back into his burrow, which he has. So he's still active, still hanging in there, but I'm just worried sick. Uh, hopefully you can get done the things you want to get done. Thumbs up for that. And of course, with diseases and such out there, please just be careful. You don't need to get sick. You don't need to get other people sick. Just be careful. Be cautious. Thumbs up for that. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing.